All right, campers. So you can see I've been busy drawing a section of a foundation wall. And what I want to do next is in these insulation layers, I want to hatch those in with lines. So let's zoom in on this top one here. So here's the precast panel on top of the wall in blue, and I want to hatch that across with lines. So let's use the Hatch Area tool over in Group R. And spacing of one inch is probably pretty good, and angle of zero I think will go flat. So let's try it like that. Identify element, so I want to hit that blue box, left click, and then pattern intersection point, that's where it's going to start the pattern. I left click again, and there I've got the uh, horizontal line insulation pattern. Now the next one down in the concrete, and I'll zoom out just a little bit. This one has a different pattern, it's a cross hatch. So what I want to do is use the second tool, cross hatch area. And the same thing, spacing an inch by an inch, I'm using the element tool. I could also use the flood tool or union intersection if you have different areas you want to want to hatch in. Cross hatch just means that it's going two ways. So you can pick uh, the angles, in my case zero and zero should turn them. Let's try it. If I left click there, intersection point again. Yep, that looks pretty good. And I can do the same thing on my other insulation level down here. And I've got that all cross hatch. Now let's look at another powerful CAD feature called cells. Cells are uh, standard symbols or details or anything that you're going to use over and over again. If you work for a real company, I'm sure they're going to have cell libraries of standard stuff that they'll want you to include in drawings. Uh, the cell groups, let's see, element cells, you can go right in the menu items and then you have to load a cell library. So this is going to be the fun part. You have to attach file and I happen to be in the right directory because I've found it again already. Let's just say for argument's sake that you can't get there and I'll show you where it is. C users and in your case if this I'm running Windows 7 so it's users in Windows XP and maybe Vista it might be documents and settings, but the, the problem is you can't get there without typing it in. So I'll type C in the bottom part of the screen, users, and then all users, and hit enter. And then it pops up with this whole list of stuff that's kind of hidden. Don't ask me why, it's just the way it is. Then I can go to Bentley, MicroStation V8i, select Series 1, Workspace, System, cell and here they are. So let's just look at a sample cell library to start out with. I'll do sample 2 and open that. And what you see is just four different cell items. I can scroll down through them with a the mouse, see the arrowhead, a sample point. And we'll just use this north directional uh, in a second to show you how this works. Now I've loaded the library. I can close out of that and then I go to scroll down here a little bit to the S group which is place active cell. So there's no active cell yet so I have to browse cell and I'll double click on the north one and then it'll show up out here whether this is open or not it'll show up out here and I can scale that maybe I want to make it a little smaller so I put a zero one in there hit the tab key so that it's locked there's a very small north arrow right you can do this for all sorts of standard stuff. Okay. But I don't really too much care about the north arrow, so I'm going to hit undo and go back to where I was here. And what I want to do is put concrete as a pattern in these concrete areas. So let me switch to the concrete level. And I can, I'll switch it back to white so it's consistent. And in that same group where we did the hatching, there's a tool called Pattern Area. All right, so you see right there, from cell, we can pattern something. 
I go to the pattern, and obviously I don't want any of these, so I'm going to detach that library. Attach a different one. In this case, I'm going to use area pat or area patterns. And you can see I got a whole bunch of different ones here. I get down through, we've got brick and concrete block and clay area and all kinds of stuff. There should be, there's a concrete one right there. So let's use this concrete area pattern. I'll double click on that. Close this. And it comes in kind of the way, about the size I want it. Maybe I could go a little bit bigger. Let's make it 0.02. If I could type. I just hit the tab key. So about that size looks pretty good, huh? So let's see what happens. Enter cell origin. Okay, I'm in place active cell. I didn't really want to be there. Driving the wrong side of the road in St. John. Alright, so let's try this again. We'll start with the pattern area tool. And I want to pick a pattern. Scroll down to the C's. I want concrete. Double click that. And I have to look at the bottom part of this interface. It's got concrete as active cell. I also want it as pattern. So let's click the pattern button. And then I should be able to use it as a pattern. I can close this out. I gotta pay attention. It switched to active cell here, which is not the tool I wanted. Back to the pattern area. It does say concrete. I can pick element, flood, union, intersection, all those. But let's do element. I'll identify the footing. Start it at that point. And there it is. I've got concrete. So I could put the same concrete you know, on the slab, wherever you want to go with it. Okay. So that's all well and good. You may have noticed that if I go over to this element, the main part of the foundation wall, it says element not a closed element can't be used. I don't know how I managed to do that, but there's a kind of workaround here. If we use the flood tool, I should be able to, if I look in the lower left hand part of the screen, it says enter data point inside area. So I'll left click in there. It does pick the element. And there I can put concrete in there as well. So there you have it.